More money, more problems. Or in TJ's case, more prison time. What happens when a gang leader is actually awarded $25 million? Let's get into this video. In a city known for its fearsome super gangs, criminal enterprise like the mob, gangs, Chicago has its own culture from graffiti on the walls to how the south side and the north side are separated. In Chicago, it's where you're born that defines who you are, not your race. This is gang life. Cartel got me working for the big faces. Federally got my car full of brick cases. Hit the pin with a grin, there ain't no faking. I was picked to my back for my shoelaces. God out, should have seen the look on their faces. All jealous cause your boy's stacking Hey, what's up guys? My name's JC. I am Ron the Strong. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell so you don't miss nothing. If you're part of my crew, mi familia, mi raza, mi pandilla, you already know. Suance la suburban, we're taking a ride to Chicago. What's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Gang Life. Today, we got, um, it's actually a little sad, you know, but it was actually brought up to my attention by one of my subscribers and it's a story about a guy that went to prison for a very long time and then was released he menaces the chicago born boy and like most of us was born into that life his uncles were actually simon city royals the simon city royals is one of the oldest and largest white street gangs in Chicago that started actually as a greaser gang and then moved into a you know made the adjustments to turn create and turn into a street gang powerful street gang I will release the video of their history later on this week just to combine it with this video but by the time he was 10 he was already skipping school smoking weed and just, you know, like most of us that grow up in that life actually started to like accumulate that, you know, that juvenile record, even though it's small stuff, it still starts to add up. And it starts to make you look, obviously, really bad on paper. But his whole life changed at the age of 13. At the age of 13, he was actually charged as an adult and convicted and sentenced to 45 years for a murder shooting that took place on the northwest side spending many years in the youth facility if you guys haven't lived this life or been through it you guys really you see i kid i understand him and this is why this story made me a little bit sad and yeah i you know it actually made me a little emotional because um when you spend years in facilities like this, a, a lot of stuff happens and it just creates more problems onto you that you already have going into these places. You, you're, you're a kid, so you, your brain is not fully developed and then you start experiencing a lot of like, just crime, you know what I mean? Um, a lot, a lot of trauma in these places. This is a bunch of kids trying to prove themselves. And if you haven't seen like some of these movies, you'll understand what I mean. At the age of 17, he got moved to the big house. He actually ended up going to Stateville. Stateville is gladiator school. Stateville has a long history in Chicago, you know, state prison that, you know, a lot of the uh, tough guys are there. A lot, there's a lot of gladiator school going on there. But in 2007, they reopened his case. And after serving 16 years, Jimenez was actually exonerated and awarded $25 million. You know, there's a lot of talk about how he got out, you know, and he changed, you know, the the gang's history in Chicago because he had all that money. He was awarding members 50,000 for face tattoos. He was buying them cars. He was uh, bailing them out of jail. Um, obviously, he moved up the ranks fast because of 
you know, the street cred that he had from the prison time, the murder, and then the money. So, and then him coming from a family that was already established as Simon City Royals, it, it all comes into play, man. And, you know, it, it's, it's a ticking time bomb waiting to happen with, with anything you make a, a gang member rich with money you're you're a ticking time bomb because then you you be actually believe in your head that you're untouchable it was too late you know prison had done what it does best and and that is make you into a criminal an animal um a lot of things and this is why i actually when i was reading and going through this story it actually like it hit me hard because this this was this was me and this could have been me going back to prison you know and I, I did go back many times because this is what I thought this is what I used to think most prisoners say what you want to hear for them to open up that that gate but once they open up that gate and you're back on the street everything changes everything because you it's really easy to do what's wrong it's hard to stay strong and say no to all the all the stuff on the streets you know the, the gang the women the the money the just the whole life it, it's it's actually very very hard because that's all you know and when you go to prison thinking that all you know then it's hard to say no when you're out it's easy to do what's somewhat what is right in there because there's there's gates, there's doors, there's rules. If you know you go to SEG if you don't follow this rule. But at the same time, you still have to be a criminal while you're in there to be able to survive. So you're still in there with your gang. There is no way around it. What's that, homie? Holy, I got thirsty. Spooks, y'all. You want no after this video was taken, there was a police chase. He lost control of the car. He struck another parked car. That happens in most chases in Chicago because there's, it's so crowded and the car, the streets are so little. So any little bump. You, the car hits, you're, you're smashing into a parked car. He was arrested, you know, after shooting this guy and he was, he was sent back to prison. Well, while he was in prison, he wrote a letter to, you know, his gang, his soldiers, whatever you want to call it. He stated on this letter that his goal still remains the same, that the Royals will stay on top, that that was his, his main goal and will remain the same. And then he ended the letter with, if any of you guys know anything about me at all, you should know this. This is where I came from. This is where I was created. This is my home. And <clears throat> I'm not gonna lie. Like when I, when I read that, that, that shit hit me hard because that was, that was me. That was me, and I hope that somebody that knows him watches this video and, and tells them that, that that's not true. Uh, you know, <clears throat> one of my scariest moments in my life came the day that I decided to stand alone and I decided to get out of my gang. It was the scariest moment for me because I was coming home from prison but I didn't, I didn't know what home was because I didn't know where I was going. I was going to the halfway house, obviously, but all the other times when I got out, the first thing that I knew where I was going was to the hood, back to the hood, back to, you know, Chicago, uh, back to the corner, back to the block, back to where I knew someone was going to see me, pick me up, take me to go buy some clothes, you know, give me a little bit of cash for the time that I did and get me high and then I was back to square one again. 
I knew and I could predict <laughs> what my future was. I was back on the block, then I was gonna get arrested again, then I was gonna go back again. And I used to think that that was my home, that prison was my home. It's not. And, and, and that's what I'm saying, like, this time when I stood by myself and I had nowhere to go and I had to build myself from scratch, I, I was terrified. I was terrified. I, I met these, I met these two girls at the Greyhound station in LA in California and they're still my friends to this day and they were sitting there waiting for a bus because they were going to go get married right and I was sitting on the bench and I was so terrified because I didn't know what was going to be of me. I didn't have a neighborhood to go home to, I didn't, I didn't have nothing. And I wanted to get up so bad to go buy a sandwich at the sandwich shop. But I couldn't get myself to get up because everybody was moving so fast. Everybody was, there was a lot of noise. A, a lot of shit that you lose contact with while you're in prison. And one of the girls looked over to me and she said, Why do you look so scared? A big guy like you with tattoos. And I just remember looking over and smiling and saying, you know, here, here, here I am thinking that I'm tough. And deep down inside, I'm not. I, I really hope that Jimenez, like, realizes that, that that's not your home. It's not. We were led to believe that and thought we believed that because we went in at such a young age and that's what our 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 heart our mind created in our heads to make us feel safe because we haven't had that it's very very hard to feel somewhat of a belonging and justifying what we do in order for us to belong to these to these circles um you know, a lot of these uh, gang members come from single uh, parent houses because the parent is always at work. Even though they, they love you and they are there for you, they're really always at work. So it's very, very, it's hard to put the finger on like, you know, and then you, you come to the, to the point where you have male figures in your life that are gang members and, you know, it's just, it's just sad. It's sad and it's happening a lot in, in every city, not just Chicago, and in, in every city. And this is why, man, this is why I do what I do. I have to, I have to, because there's, there's a lot of kids that saw me doing what I was doing and now they're in prison because of me. Yeah. My name is JC. I am wrong strong. Don't judge nobody. Stay in your lane. Live savage. And remember, we only have one life to live. Live it out here free. Stay out of prison. Stay out of gangs. Stay sober. And just have a good life, man. I'll catch you guys on the rebound.